Music has that ability in a single moment, just in the sound, mm. in the beat of a drum, in the chord, a, a melody, a lyric. It just brings you to a realization of, wow, this is what we've been through. This is where we're going. This is who we are. What does being a maverick mean to you? What are you channeling in this role? Today, I'm joined by a true icon, and that's a much more ambitious response. This all clearly resonates with so many people. How do you stay true to yourself? Welcome to Mavericks with Ari Melber, and today I am joined by the Oscar and Golden Globe winning film composer, five-time Grammy winning and Emmy-nominated jazz piano master, the late night band leader, you may know him, the composer, John Batiste. Thanks for being here. Ooh. Oh, sir. How are we feeling? Feeling great. I feel wonderful. How you doing? I, I feel great. And yeah. even before we sat down here, you were warming up or whatever you call it. It's, yeah. a, it's a nice way to get into an interview. You got to do it. You got to be ready. You've been ready from the jump. So we'll start at the beginning. A very musical family. What did it mean growing up in the Batiste family tradition? Many know, some may not. Well, you know, it's like the, the tribes of New Orleans culture, tribes of New Orleans music. Literally, these musical families, my family being one of the largest among these many tribes of musicians and creators, culture bearers. My dad, you know, seven brothers on my dad's side formed a family band, over 30 cousins. I was the youngest cousin when I was growing up, so I would be the one that was playing, um, you know, like the little bongo drums and then the drum kit eventually. And then we had the younger cousins form the junior family band. And you have about three or four drummers. And you can't have a band with three or four drummers. So <laughs> there's a lot of drummers. Yeah. It's a lot of drummers. It's a drum circle. Grateful Dead had two drummers. Yeah, you could have two, maybe three, but okay. you gotta have some other instruments. <laughs> you know, so that's when I switched to the piano. And um, you know, all types of different musical styles. It was just like growing up in a, a true melting pot. Do you remember an age where you looked around and said, oh, not everyone's in this kind of family? Like, is this inspiration? Does it feel different? Does it feel even like an obligation to live up to? It's a responsibility, it feels like that, because I didn't know it was abnormal until I left it. So what age was that? Oh my goodness, maybe 14, 15 really? years old. So at 10, you were like, everybody, every family is just a band. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> even like the profession of music. It was, you know, uh, there would be music for everything. Yeah. The music, not necessarily as an entertainment factor, but music as a, a factor of people gathering. So, you know, I didn't think it was a thing to be a musician. Everybody's a musician. You know, some of the, uh, the folks in the neighborhood who are doing bad things, even those folks could play a trumpet on the side. Mm -hmm. Well, as we reveal and peel the layers. Let's get it. Let's, let's, let's get it. <laughs> we talk about your family. Let's look at, because we got the archives. Let's look yeah. at oh, you, a young Batiste. Oh, take a, take snap. A Right now we're gonna sing about, about Louisiana, a song called Back These Roads. Tell you a story about our beautiful state. And I'm talking now to the youngest members of that very musically talented family, the Baptiste Kids. This is eight-year-old Jonathan, and this is 12-year-old Jamal. Do you remember that? Oh man, of course I yeah. remember How that. How did that feel? Oh my gosh, I was terrified. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I was, um, you know, music was all a part of our upbringing. That's my cousin Travis, my other cousin Jamal, who were incredible. And one of my um, earliest memories was us playing our annual show at the Children's Museum. And this is, some of my first performance experiences. And then I remember also that same year, around that time I was maybe uh, seven, eight years old, filming a, um, a commercial and being in front of the camera. And all of these experiences, singing even just um, in a 30 second ad, whew, I was terrified. I, I was, um, 
I didn't really know what it was that music had for me in the performance realm. But I didn't really know just yet, besides the joy of that, that you see, being on stage, like, I had to know what to say. Even back then, it was hardwired into me to be like, okay, if I'm up here, I want to say Well, you look happier something. now than on the drums there. At eight on the drums, you looked like you I were... I was terrified. Yeah, you looked I'm, like you were really just trying to hold it together. Well, that was the pattern I played. That pattern that you see, that was the only pattern that I knew at the time. <laughs> okay. And, um, you know, contrary to popular belief, when I first started playing music, it was not just like, oh, it just came to you. Right. So you're saying something deep, which is a lot of people look and they say, oh, you become a musician yeah. or you choose that or you try to make it a vocation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of extras on top of that. You're saying you were actually raised in a spirit and an environment where saying musician was like saying person. You're like, yeah, we're people. This is one of many things we do. Yes. Yeah, so is, like, is that why it stayed so natural for you? I value it feeling real. I value things feeling connected. I value things feeling like it's coming from a person and not a brand or not something that's um, focus grouped. I could give you a bar for that. I don't know. Do we have time? I would love your <laughs> the the references and just the the encyclopedic knowledge and the 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 at will calling up of these bars is amazing. Respect. I would love you to do that Respect. as much you, as possible. You, yeah, as much as interview. possible. As much as humanly possible. Yes. We'll try to stay human today. Yeah. Oh well. It, was it not Yassine Bey? Because you said, yeah. you're not a brand. Yeah. And he said, I don't care what kind of brand you are. I care what kind of man you are, what your principles and standards are. Wow. That's right on. That's it. That's, that's what people feel at the end of the day anyway. Even the biggest brand, if you will, or biggest um, messaging has to be connected to something real mm. for it to resonate with right. people. Which is funny because we're now we're in a moment in a digital society where there's so much performance. When you say stay human and when you say that the music brings people back to their own personal truth, what, what does that mean? Well, there's so much that we go through and so much that has happened to culminate into us. Mm -hmm. Everything that we have lived through Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we lose connection to our own experience and thus the experience of the community and those around us and the world around us because everything's moving at a mile a minute. There's so much information. There's so much stimulus. It's pushing us to the point where we have to just be present enough to, to make it to the next day, let alone reflecting on what happened yesterday, let alone reflecting on what happened last year, <laughs> let alone our life and all of our lineage and the culture and everything we come from. So music has that ability in a single moment, just in the sound, mm. in the beat of a drum, in the chord, a, a melody, a lyric. It just brings you to a realization of, wow, this is what we've been through. This is where we're going. This is who we are. Like, all of that is translated. It's the universal language, not just because you don't have to speak music to understand it and feel it, but it's universal in that it touches all of the universal human experience in one vibration. That's what's powerful about music. That's why I do it, because it's like, oh, I can speak to all of this just in, in, in a song. Like, I can speak to a world in a song in three minutes, or I can write a symphony, and it can speak to... It, it, it's endless. You know, it, it, it's very exciting. Even just thinking about it, I want to go and create. You've traveled the world and, and met people, and you speak to people, and you have such an a understanding of people and how people come together. As a musician, that's our study as well. We're observing the world. We're observing how music has existed over the history of time and today and how we're forecasting where it's going. And I think it's, we're in a time where we need to get back to the root of what music has meant for so many cultures, for so many generations, we've almost like, uh, we've forgotten what music actually is meant to do or what it can do. Mm. And um, we're coming back around to it. So um, that's when I'm saying stay human. That's what it meant, you know, when I was coming up with this philosophy in my, my 20s when I first moved to New York, coming up here from Louisiana. I was like, what am I actually trying to say? Mm. 
what it, you probe your, your artistry, you probe your identity to figure out, okay, what is it, why am I on this stage? What do I want to share with these people? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that was, it, it just, that was one of the things that kept ringing true. Oh, stay human. And, and um, it just continues to reveal itself, even to me, the meaning of that. Mm. There was one summer where I think that's when I started to have an understanding of what I wanted to say as an artist, and my talent started to blossom. And then the next year, it was like I was playing five instruments, and I was, it just something happened. I'd worked to get to that point where there's like this inflection point. You build to that, and then there's a moment where it all clicks. You then moved beyond drums and you went piano and melodica? Yeah, pian first it was uh, piano, melodica, and saxophone, uh, kind of around the same time. Mm -hmm. So that was like uh, 11, 12 years old, piano. And then let's, get, let's talk about the haters for a second. There are people who say melodica. Yeah. Not serious. Yeah, you know, that's, let them be there. <laughs> let them be there, you know. People, people always say, you know, I'm sure, you know, you, you deal with this, whereas, is he serious? Or is he, right. you know, like, I can be serious, I can be playful, I can be very wistful and deep and nostalgic, and I can be whimsical. Right. Does the melodica have a natural kind of inherent mm -hmm. whimsy? Yes. We, we associate it like with that, like a moment in a film, or are we putting that on there? I think it has a, a natural sound, it's, it's uh, averse to pomposity. It's averse to being mm. uppity and, and strange because it sounds like literally a child's toy. It sounds, it has this sound that is um, almost shrill to the point that it cuts through the texture of what's happening and you have to wonder where is it coming from. So we don't expect like Yo-Yo Ma or Itzhak Perlman to jump, jump on, on a melodica. melodica. No, no, no. But no. you like it because you say this is a nice feeling, fun sound. Yeah, it's, it's a fun sound. It's mobile. I was always trying to figure out, you know, when I was seeing musicians march through the street in New Orleans playing horns and trumpets and trombones, and, you know, when I started to really play the piano, I can't march with a piano. So that was one thing. The other thing is, Everything about artistry comes down to the imagination. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine a way to use something, you can do anything. People play the spoons. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had, well, I grew up in Seattle. We had Spoon Man. I don't know if you know. Yeah, of course. Come on. Man, Spoon Come Man. Come on, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it's a killing. Yeah. It's kill. It's great to take something that is not meant. That's one of my favorite things about artistry. How do we take something that's not meant to be in the space and create a reason for it to be in the space that's compelling and true. Interesting, so then you have this duality yeah. and th what you call this, this energy, this whimsy. Yes. You go to Juilliard uh, and that's very what classical traditional. How, yes. did, how did you navigate that arriving there? Well, it was a, it was a very interesting time. There was a, an incredible shift in my life at the age of 16, when I decided, you know, I wanted to leave New Orleans, I wanted to figure out where I could study. And I went to, you know, all of the different auditions in New York, whether it's Manhattan School of Music, Juilliard School, all of the conservatories where there's a 1% acceptance rate, everybody around the world is trying to get in. So that level of competition that, um, that shift in thinking, okay, I'm leaving this structure, structure of um, home and family and community to go into this place I don't know anybody. And that was a huge shift. And, and I arrived and I went to the jazz program and also the classical program. And there was um, a, a range of different um, levels of pushback and misinterpretation and misunderstanding. But ultimately, I love all of that. Because it really is just, you know, what are you made of? It shows you who you are and it helps you to kind of define, okay, I got I to gotta sculpt what I'm about. It like like uh, <laughs> you, you design yourself. Nobody built like you. Mm. You know? I know. Okay. I buy that. Yeah. yeah. And we're in that process, right? Yes. That's yes. why things feel as important now as they did. It's like uh, uh, Bowie said, uh -huh. I have the firm belief that this Tuesday is just as important as last Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah. So it's like, why does that matter? Or you talk about the past or your trauma, and it's like, well, there could be trauma today and tomorrow, too. Whatever you're going through is continuing, right? Huh. Yeah, yeah. It's not... That's why there's no such thing as failure. Mm. Because? Well, the only, only failure is to not keep going. That's why this Tuesday and next Tuesday, it, if you keep going, then failure as a concept cannot thrive. It cannot live. It doesn't exist. Mm. So that's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. When you were at Juilliard and you said the misunderstandings or you're navigating that, did you feel like you were fulfilling your family's legacy or walking away from some aspect of it? For me, it wasn't all bad and it wasn't all clear at the time. To me, it was just a, a intuitive, everything happens for a reason. I'm moving in this direction. A lot of great things are happening. I'm not gelling with the institution, you know, which is so funny now I'm on the board, but it's crazy to think back then the culture of it wasn't necessarily giving me everything that I had expected or everything that I imagined um, it would be. What would Juilliard board member Batiste say to student Batiste when you were what? How old then? I was 17 around that time. What would you say to 17-year-old Batiste now mm -hmm. that you're up here on the board? Well, you know what, man? It would, if I was on the board, it would just be a different scenario. But what I would say is just continue to do your thing, because I think it all worked out. I don't, I wouldn't say anything different. Would you say, like, don't trip? Would you say, like, even be less, or that was part of the process to be part the way of you? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's a part of it. You got to let it be what it is. Because the thing about it is those are lessons. Those are moments of, of discovery. Right. But at the same time, it was, it was tough. Well, that's what's interesting about the way people may know you now. First of all, right. recently, last few years, right, there's been tremendous accolades. So that's a type of success. And people know you as someone who comes across as very resolved, mm -hmm. integrated, grounded. Right. But you're telling us there were dichotomies and contradictions going through all this, and maybe there still are some. Before we sat down for this interview, we were talking about warm ice. Yeah. Which I told you was just water. That's right. crazy. You talk about <laughs> love riot. Yeah. You seem That's drawn to these dualities, right? So tell us about love riot. Tell us about social music. Man, you warm ice. You came up with that. That's right on it. I love, <laughs> love the, the gray area. Mm -hmm. There's something special in the gray area. Always. You can find something in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, love riot is this idea that we came up with. I came up with doing um, these street performances, and we would do these in the subways and street corners of New York for many years with my band Stay Human, and we would go out and we would play. And then that would change from city to city. The, the thing would become the encore of a show that, you know, the venue might have four or 5,000 people. We'll take those people out of the venue, march up the street, and, like, cram into a coffee shop as many and they would just be, feel like a riot basically mm -hmm. at the these things the more and more people we would play for the more times we would do this around the world it would feel like there was um this roving processional musical love riot going on and how much of that fed into the making of or the spirit of we are well that was a big part of you know new orleans the second line tradition for when someone passes away so then if you take that inspiration and that evolves in my life and in my generation into the love riot and would stay human. And then you build that concept of social music, which for me is this idea of what was music before it was entertainment, all of those early forms of music and communities. And how do you integrate that with contemporary sounds and contemporary ideas? The first version of We Are was actually social music, which was an independent album that I put out 10 years prior to We Are. So I called that album Social Music, and that was kind of when the philosophy first developed. So Social Music to We Are is an era. Do you feel like you were bottling or trying to capture the feeling then in that album, and then did you feel in advance before all the accolades, I got it, like, 
it took this long, but I got it? Or, or was it still an open question for you personally? It, it, I felt like I got it on social music, but didn't have... But they didn't get it? No, they didn't get it for sure, which is I'm used to that. Yeah. But also, social music was ahead, and it also, did, we didn't have the resources. I was doing that on, you know, sleeping on people's couches and, you know, playing supper clubs and going to college <laughs> when I recorded that. Mm -hmm. So that captured it, but it wasn't aligned across the board. Mm -hmm. And then We Are was obviously an evolution. A lot of things got better. My game got better. The whole thing was better in the sense of execution, and it was a line. It, it was like I had to live that 10 years in order for things to align themselves to that concept to really be able to reach people. So you have that tradition, the line in New Orleans. You have your take on it. Then right. You have you doing it in, in improv, then turn it into something that's the more traditional album. Right. And then fast forward, you're doing the line at what, the, the French U.S. state dinner? Yes. And you got President Biden yes. in there. Yes. And the, the, the word is out there, the word on the White House street, if you will, on <laughs> Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue, <laughs> where it really goes down. The word is that, uh, that you had the president involved, but he did not have a hanky. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. But you know Tell us he, about that. It's, it's forgivable on the first time. <laughs> But you're, you're performing in the state dinner. Just take people into it. We're talking back to the French tradition and all the complexity of that, but you have the current leader of France mm -hmm. and the leader of the free world, and you're there performing this. What does that mean to you? I love just being myself in every room. Mm -hmm. I just love it. I love being able to really be myself. And that was a beautiful moment for my family. It was, for me, imperative that I could take my whole family, my grandfather, all of, uh, all of my, 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 uh, my nephews, my, my sister, my mom, my dad. And that's not wife. nothing. I mean, someone watching the interview goes, oh, that sounds nice, or that's cool, but uh, the, truth, the truth is, you know, you can get invited. The bigger the thing you get invited to, sometimes the tighter they are about it, right? Yes. It's like, I mean, Drake said, they don't give out plus one, so you won't see me pulling up to the Met. Right? He said, basically, they wouldn't give him see, enough plus one. You're breaking ones. it down for the people. Well, would, would when you I say I brought real. my family, it's no, not No, you brought just... ten. So Dr. Jill Biden, the yes. first lady calls yes. you, the story goes, yes. and says, come perform the stage dinner, which is a high honor. Yes. And you say, okay, but I need to, I need to bring ten. Yes. Can I bring ten? Yes. Which Absolutely. is amazing. Yes. And, and that made it not just the honor of it, but it made the environment and the, when we talk about authenticity and sharing that real, yeah. that, that, that real version of this, y'all gonna get the real sauce. This is the rule. This is, this and is it's it. hard to front if you're in front of people who change your diapers. That's right on. They're going to look at you like Bo bars. Use that if you can. So. I just Send need you to Weezy. continue this. This is fire. This man, let me explain. <laughs> America, America, you got to understand, this is not normal. <laughs> we have not seen the likes of an Ari Melba in the news media space. He is connecting with you on multiple <laughs> levels and educating you culturally. You're very, and you're... also reaching the depth of seriousness and journalistic integrity that we all deserve. You're very kind, you're very kind, and this is why, this is why you can only be in so many newsrooms. We really need yes. to be around musicians, because then you get the energy up, right? Well, they call it the hype man in hip hop, band leader, whatever you want to call it, you get that energy up. Let's take it to World Music Radio. Because you just told us it was 10 years to get to there. Yeah. Now, and then we saw the Grammys. Yes. We see you holding all the Grammys. Man. And I, yes. I said to you uh, before we started the interview, um, and I say it with all respect, um, you know, on my word, in the music industry, if you sit down with the marketing type people and they say, build your road to the Grammys, right, it would be totally different the way you did. You just right. walked us through some of that. Yes. But now it's a faster turnaround, right, to this yes. next album, yes. and you have a bunch yes. of interesting collabs. So tell us about what is the new album. So it's like if you had an idea to make a, 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 a big budget movie and 
you couldn't make the movie, you didn't have the money. Okay. And then you make another movie that you really want to make that is also, you know, a, a, a dear movie to you to make but you have the means to make it at that time. It's successful. Now you have the budget. You have the means. You have the, mm -hmm. the, the, the wind behind your, your wings to fly and do this big budget movie. That's what this record is. It's like, okay, it's Godfather 2. It's like, hey, hopefully for me, if we live up to that, then, you know, maybe I'll retire after this. But I think this record We previewing is, a retirement today? Ah. Uh, I'm not gonna retire, but it's just like uh, it, would, it. It took 10 years to get to we are, and basically I'm saying it took 10 years, not what 11 or 12 years to get to this. Mm. But I just couldn't do this until we had the support and the um, the success that's allowed for this record to happen. It's a, a expansive, global, popular music album, and it really is. A concept record. You're guided through the album. What's the concept? You're guided through by a character that I play named Billy Bob. Billy Bob Bobob. He's a traveling interstellar griot. He travels the world. Billy Bob Bobob. That's right. B4. B4 is taking you through this expansive radio broadcast. It's a supernatural radio broadcast. And you're given the instructions at the beginning as to how to partake and it goes through all of these incredible sonic landscapes, this, this incredible journey. It's, it's really a whole experience. It's a movie. So no wonder you put Lil Wayne on it, because he's not a human. He's a Martian. Well, I, yes. <laughs> See, you go in <laughs> Wayne, Wayne not only is on it, he's, his bars are, you know, to me, he's the GOAT. But, you know, I'm biased. We 17 war rep. But also, he's playing guitar on the album. You have... So he's rapping and playing rapping and guitar playing. with you. Yeah, playing, we play together. There's so many things. I'm trying not to spoil it. I just think people... No, people, we, we want you to... You could spoil it. I know you want me to. Because <laughs> this is what we do here. <laughs> it's, it's just there's so many things in this album that I've been wanting to do. Yeah. And... Uh, now I've been able to do them. It's amazing. And, and then I think you might have become a new trivia answer off the album. I'll give it to you and you tell me. But I think it will become trivia, name the only album that has Lil Wayne and Kenny G on it. <laughs> it's true. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> right, I don't right. know if there's a way we could double check that, but I'm pretty sure. Man, we did this record. <laughs> That's crazy. Lil Wayne. And Kenny, Kenny G. G. So what does that tell us about your spread, right? We're used to features. We're used yes. to collabs, Glasper yeah. and others. We're used to, yeah. and there's such a rich tradition yeah. because hip hop grows out of the funk, soul, jazz yeah. tradition. Absolutely. Um, and yet what we see here is, you, are you as comfortable with Kenny as, as Weezy? I'm absolutely comfortable. That's the thing about it. There's always these forces that are trying to limit us. And there's always forces that are trying to make you be one thing. I'll make you be lesser than what you are. And all of us as human beings are expansive. It's impossible for me to be one thing. I've studied all this music. I've lived all this life. I've had all these experiences. I can't limit myself. That's why I don't believe in genres. So that's important because that's something you've lived. Uh, you, you don't believe in genres. You said the free exchange of information is what can feed the lack of genre adherence. Mm -hmm. And then we see the Grammys, and you were nominated in the categories of R&B album, traditional R&B performance, improvised jazz solo, jazz instrumental, American roots performance, American roots song, score soundtrack, and classical composition there. Uh, that's a lot of different stuff. And then we just talked about all the genres on your, on your actual album that's forthcoming. So where does that take us for the music community. Do you think that not only genres don't exist, that's sort of a observation, yes. right, an insight? Yes. Or do you actually think that the continuation of these categories itself is somehow not constructive for music? Do you think we should stop even using terms like jazz and R&B? Well, I think that the cat is out of the bag, it's gone. It's, it, I do think that there's a, a, a understanding of different communities 
that have formed around genres or formed around traditions that are important to continue because I think we're not going to completely change the perception of what is, to me, a truth overnight. This is not a bar, but the sociologist W.I. Thomas said, if people believe things to be real, they will be real in their consequences. Absolutely. So you're talking about genre, you're talking about currency, yes. right? Which is, we, as you say, we know it's made up and yet it's the foundation of our capitalist world. Right. Or how about this? You know what wine is. Yeah. Grape juice. <laughs> Yay! Literally. Yeah, yeah, Literally. yeah. You know, that's an interesting approach to creativity that, uh, huh, like you think about a thing, we brainstorming now. So you think Let's about go. a thing, and then you think about how many different permutations of that thing exist under a different moniker or a different, like water, it's just warm ice. And just figure out how much you can view the same thing, how many ways you can view it from a different perspective and what that inspires in the creative process. You know, it's like you talk about, you know, Jay-Z for triple entendres mm -hmm. and, and, and the wordplay and the meaning is deeper than just, okay, this means three different things. Mm -hmm. It's looking at the word itself sometimes from many different angles and repeating it. And we should, maybe we should tell the people, if you don't retire, our, our mixtape collaboration, Warm Ice, triple entendre, no genre. Let's go. Say, <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Announcements. Before I let you get out of here, um, I did want to play one other interesting thing for you. Um, and this is an artist that I know has inspired many, including yourself. There was even talk that you might be working on a project, a musical. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look yeah. at Basquiat. You go to a restaurant and they write about it in, in, a, in the post on page six, you know? And... Do you like that? I mean, I'm sure in some ways it's it's, it's fun, yeah. I know, I try to I like to try to be to remain a little, little reclusive, a little reclusive, and not be just and be out there, you know, just to, you know to be to be brought up and to be brought down, you know, like they do to do to most of them. I can't think of one big celebrity type person who they haven't done that to. They tend to be uh, here and there. Does he inspire you? What does he mean to you? Uh, and are you doing a musical or ever going to do a musical or project about it? I, I think his, his work is at the intersection of many things that I happen to be, you know, a, um, a part of these lineages and also at the intersection of. And also he's, his work has a, a quality of the associative creative process that reflects mine. It's, constant creative flow, constant motion. Like, I'm, I'll be watching television. Maybe the newspaper will be open. I'll be working on some chords that I've been thinking about for a while. A collage of everything. And it all will find its way into the work in ways that may be layered. Maybe I've painted over the thing that was originally there, and you don't even see it, but it's inspiring what you see on the surface. And that's what I resonate with most. It's, He's um, one of the artists that's most visually manifest the, the creative process that I go through when I'm creating music. Wow, that's tight. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, the, and there will be a musical, you said? Or you know oh, we've been working on it. It's exciting. I'm excited to just, I just want to make things when it's the right time to make them. So, you know, I'll work on it. And then when I feel like it's time to move to something else, I go and then I'll come back. So I'm just in flow. I don't, yeah. there's not like a, a, a roadmap, a plan. I'm just following the muse. I love that. Um, this is our lightning round here on Mavericks. You ready? Like, lean in. Yeah. Oh, snap. We start easy. Okay, let's go. New York hot dogs or red beans? Red beans. Bubblegum snowball or Zaps potato chips? Zaps. <laughs> Composing mm. or performing? Composing. New Orleans or New York? Dang. New Orleans. Holly Grove or Brooklyn? 
Holly Grove, man. You, Holly Grove. In a word or a sentence, New Orleans. Charismatic. Frenchman Street. Upbringing. Love Riots. Fire. The video game music for Sonic the Hedgehog. Crystalline. <laughs> Street Fighter. Epic. In a word or a sentence, Wynton Marsalis. Luminary. Prince. Purple. Lil Wayne. Martian. Oprah. Oh. Stephen Colbert. Homie. Uh, finish this sentence. Someone I've never worked with who I want to collaborate with is... Drake. Uh, finish this sentence. My family's musical tradition meant that I... Was well equipped. Winning Grammys showed me... Be yourself. I thought it was over when... Never. I knew I'd made it when... Never. <laughs> Failure means... More success. Success means... More failure. Being a maverick means... Living up to who you truly are. John Batiste, thank you for being here. Where you at? <laughs> Ooh, Ari!